Hello, everybody. I'm here. <laughs> I have been having the best time working on this Halloween thing. But I've got to be honest. I didn't end up getting the drawing for our next project. So we'll talk about it. I'll show you all the photos again. And then I'll make sure I get it done by next week. But boy, have I been having a good time. I Sometimes, do you ever have a time when you're just kind of, you're having a hard time putting the creativity together? And that's kind of where I am. And there's a lot going on, I guess, in my head. And, uh, but... You know, and we had good news this week. The some money we were hoping for that we had been fighting for came through. So that part is very good. And then um what was now I forgot what I was gonna say. But anyway, let me get busy and show you. Let me make sure. Whoops. Oh, come, come on now, silly thing. Um, let me get ready and show you where I am with my haunted house, my haunted Halloween. Here it is. So I'm still working on it, and I'm going to get ready to quilt it, and I'm having so much fun with it. Somebody had asked for the pattern for this that I had drawn up, so I put it on our group's I.O. If somebody, because it's just a little something I drew up, but if somebody else wants it and you're not a member of our group, then just shoot me a little email and I'll send it to you. But I have had a good, good time working on this. What I was doing right before we got on here was doing thread painting. And that's always a lot of fun. So, all right. I'll show you a couple things close up. I put a vulture in. See my vulture? And then there's two bats. And there's a shadow bat. And then a bat over here. And then my little owl. And my spider... So what I'm going to be doing is going over all the lines that I kind of drew in and emphasize those with thread painting. See how this pumpkin right here, the lobes are very strong? Well, that's because I did the thread painting. So, and then when I finish doing all the thread painting, I will trim it up just a little bit. Then I've got some batting right here and backing to put on it. And then I'm going to do just minimal quilting. I want the pumpkins. I'm going to put an extra piece just behind them. In fact, that's something I can show you right now. So I'm grabbing some. This is polyester. I love using a nice high loft polyester, medium loft with my art quilts. If I want, if I want the pattern to stand out, this is what I do. So I take a square. I hope you guys had a good week this week. I take a square of the batting and cut it to a, the rough pumpkin shape. Because you don't want it really bigger. If you put it much bigger, then you won't get the exact definition you want. But what I'm doing right now is I'm taking this piece of batting and cutting it into the pumpkin shape. Then let me show you what I do next. I've got some glue right... Well, I had some glue here. Let me see. Boy, when I get into my artistic creativity thing... I go wild. <laughs> Things get all, are put all over the place. But here is the back of one of those pumpkins. So what I'm going to do is put some glue on the back of this fabric. 
And you can use tacky glue might even be better for this because it will it will hold a little harder. But what I'm going to do is on each of the back of these pumpkins and the moon, I'm going to put an extra layer of batting. So I'll cut these out and fit them just to the right shape. Because you can see this is the moon and these are the three pumpkins. That way, then when I get ready to quilt, I will then put, yes, it'll stick in a moment. It just, you know, the white glue takes a little longer to dry. You can even take some little scraps and put under it like that. So it has even a bit of, you know, more um, loft right in the center. So then when you, when I've got the three pieces and they're kind of glued down and mostly dry, then you lay the batting all the way across, then you're backing. So then when it comes time to quilt it, when it comes time to quilt it and you push it down, do you see how it will stick out? So I like to do that for my art quilts and I'll have it behind the moon. Now, any thread painting, anything I'm going to do to the front of the moon, I'm going to do before I put the batting on because I want this to stick out and be more rounded shape. So I'm going, I'm right now I'm going in and putting all of the little details in with thread so that they'll, these have been pretty much done. Not all of the, of the lobes of the watermelon, but, and then I'll come in here with black and do um, a tiny thin zigzag for the spider's web. I have already taken gray and zigzag down all my little fused on appliques and my branches. And I might try to think of what to put right here, or I might just leave it to have your eye, so your eye can have a place to rest. Then I'm gonna trim a little off the bottom. I'm gonna trim a little bit off the sides. Once all the thread painting is done, because I'd like to get all of this zigzagged now, I zigzagged the, these pumpkins with gray thread because I wanted them to show up. The top part is where the moon is glowing on it, but the bottom part's supposed to be in the shadow. So that's why that, and I'm going to blend them with ink tints, but um, I think they're a lot of fun. I love my vulture sitting on top of this tombstone. And I don't know if you noticed, but I put some craters on the moon in the shape of a smile, a pumpkin face. So I think <gasps> Kathy Klein's at a quilt retreat. Woo! Please tell all your retreaters hello. We said hi. Oh, how wonderful. Yep, in a couple weeks, I get to go to a retreat, and I can't wait. But anyway, I'm pretty pleased with all of it. The This background is an orangey purple that I had as an ombre, and I think it's right cute. And this has taken me maybe four hours. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time but this is going to be something fun that I can pull out every Halloween and enjoy it. All right. So let me, one thing I think I would like to do next is take some of my Chromacraft textile medium. And Mary, I'll be talking to you in just a second too. I just saw your email. I put some of the textile medium in a cup, and I don't want this to run. I only want the color to be where I want it. So what I'm going to do is get a start out with a small brush. Okay. Now I have done a lot of I have done a lot of um Ink tents, let me grab those. Let me see. 
Sorry I started into this so quickly. I was working on it right up until the time, and I guess I was just wrapped up in it. Do you ever get like that where when you're really busy with your artwork that you don't want to stop? I mean, I, I would have a hard time making myself eat or anything. Here is the Derwin ink tints, and these are for fabric, so they are really wonderful. All right, so I'm going to set them. Let me see if I can. Whoops. I don't want to loosen this too much. But back up just a little so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So I've got a little bit of this textile medium. Normally when I use it, I make it like a 50-50 with water. Okay. But I just want to show you. The colors bloom when I paint this on. What I wanted to do is to give them more of the moonlight coming out. And in fact, I've down here, I've got some shadow. Let me, I want to make sure I keep a rag right now because I don't want to mix the colors up too much. But here we go. So how is everybody tonight? I hope that you are all doing well. I want to make sure I just got a little bit of the shadowing on the nose. And this is what I want to make sure not to have the ink tints run, but to develop the color. I put yellow and orange, trying to, and in fact, up in here, I did too, to blend these two fabrics, because I put a much lighter, and I wanted it to blend with the rest of the moon. And so you see how then it just, it really blossoms. I put some white on the ends of things here for the little moon shadow. I put a little orange on the bird feet and his wings. So anyway, I love these ink tints. And you can also, let's say that's just not enough brightness for you. Then what you can do is you've got the, media, the gel medium on here. So come in now and bump up the color and anything anytime they're damp that ink will just melt and bloom out so and let me see let me do it this way so I think you can see it a little better but now it's got more color and more shading on this pumpkin then I'm going to come down here because I put some yellow and orange here. And just to make sure I have enough, because I don't want it to be quite as stark a line right here. It's supposed to be where the moonshine is shining on it, the moonlight, and then where the shadows are. So I'm going to just come and rub more right here. And let's see how it looks. All right. And this was a tangerine. I also like coming in here with a lot of yellow to lighten it. But all I'm doing is doing a little bridge between the light reflected part of the pumpkin and the lower part. So now when I come in here and put this on, you'll get to see more color opening up. And once this is wet with the medium, then it has enough dampness to let the color bloom. And I even put a little yellow right at the top of the pumpkins so that they could look like there's a touch of glow 
from the moonlight. So now let me concentrate on this one. But I'm hoping it's bringing these to life just a little. Because my fabric was looking a little dark. So I said, no problem. I will just, that's where I'll come in with the ink tents. I haven't trimmed all my threads from thread painting yet. So, and then one thing I'm going to want to do, so now I think they are a little bit brighter, and I think I'm probably going to come back in with a little more, the yellow is making it look a little brownish, so I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of this orange, and that because sometimes be careful of your colors because if you mix them a certain way they can turn to mud you've heard that before so I like this better where I come back and I add a touch more orange and really pump up that orange okay so there they are and I think what happens with ink tents it just Brings it out a touch more, you know? All right. So then I told you I had blended this light fabric with the darker orange above it. And then I put a lot of yellow ink tints up here to bring out a brighter yellow-orange. And this is a good time to come in with some white and pump this up, too. And I'll play with this going back and forth until I get the right colors right where I want them. But I like, I do it all in layers. You first do the best job you can with fabrics, getting it as close to where you want it to be that you can with fabric. Then come back in. Like here, I put a little yellow around the moon just to kind of give it a little halo of glow. So when I come in here, see how now that yellow is appearing. And once this medium dries, it won't look as brownish. One of the problems of getting the fabric wet is it changes a little color too. But you'll see this yellow start developing. And then as the fabric starts to dry, it'll leave behind the colors you added to the top of it. Sometimes when the fabric gets wet, you see the underneath fabric show through a little. You know how that goes. But, okay. So we'll come back to this when it's gotten drier so that you can actually see that it's not as muddy brown as it looks. Although I did add a little bit of brown here and there to give it the effect of a cloud going across. But, all right. Then I'll come through here with some white. I'll come through again with some sherbet lemon, nice yellow. All right, so we'll let that dry and hopefully it won't look as dark because it anywhere that this, this pale fabric is touched with wet, it tends to want to look brown but it will dry up. Um, then let me show you. So I just wanted to show you some of the colors I was working with. I might take, I just might take some, um, what was I? Oh, I might take a little bit of acrylic paint and, and do a little dot for the eyes because I want those eyes to really jump out at you. But now let me show you really quickly um, 
Let's see. How I do the thread painting to get the lobes of the pumpkin to stand out. Okay. Oops. Oops. Well, let me. Sorry, my my uh my little connections, my little elbows are a little loose here, but I'll get it down. Let me see. Okay. Well, I think I better tighten. Let me see if I can get this. These joints are hard. I can't just tighten them with my hand the way I want to. So I have to use this little unusual wrench. <sighs> Come on. Oh, let me see. It's this joint right there. All right. Let me see. I can tighten it just another touch. I think Mark and I are going to have to spend some more time down here adjusting these. I try. I so I use them. I I use the camera, then I get offline real quick, and I don't think about it until it's time for the next show. Um, let me see. All right. Well, that was interesting. Okay, I think I've got it. <laughs> All right. So I just wanted to show you. Now, let me see something. I think my thread got stuck down in the bobbin. Let me just check real quick. Sometimes when you're be when you're thread painting and you're going back and forth a lot. Don't be surprised if you get some thread hung up a little bit below. I don't know if any of you... What does the textile medium do? Um, oh, good question. Thank you for uppercasing it. Um, it. The thread painting... I mean, when you do ink tints, you develop the color. It's not just a... It's not just a little colored pencil. The lead in the ink tents is actual ink dye. So you have to, the color comes out when you put water on it. But the one thing I don't want to use the water for is it will cause the color to spread and kind of um, soak in places you don't want it to soak. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I don't have anything hung up in here. I just got through cleaning it out the other day because I had such full... I do see some. I had such fun. It's hung up in my thread cutter, so let me get that out. Ah, yay. Okay. Yep, I got it all out. Okay, I after every couple bobbins, I pull it apart and clean it because when you use it to do things like thread painting, you're going to get a little more lint. Do never blow into a machine with either your breath or canned air. Instead, get a vacuum. Um, I have a wonderful little machine brush right here these these full ends are my favorite and they i get all everywhere there's lint because lint really does slow you down when you're trying to get your best performance okay tighten that back down i thought when i was hitting i love this machine because it has an automatic thread cutter but if it gets hung up on the little scissor things, then it can't cut very good. All right. So let me get this threaded real quick. Sorry about this. I forgot that when I was using it, the thread cutter was acting caught. All right. So now I have threaded it, put back on my bobbin plate. All right. Here we go. 
So what I'm going to do is show you, I've got it set on zigzag, a narrow zigzag. And I've got a zigzag foot on here, a narrow zigzag. And whoops, hold on. Oh, let me see. Okay. Let's see. I hope I put everything back, right? No, it's acting up. I must have something else caught in it. But I was going to show you how I zigzag down to show the lobes. I zigzag the eyes. I zigzag the teeth. Besides zigzagging things down so I know that everything will stay put. All right. So now let me get these threads off. And let's go and look at. Show you. All right. Let me get this back up here. One day I'm going to have a couple cameras and I'm just going to be all that with myself. <laughs> but anyway, but I think I'm trying to think of what I was meaning to tell you. And the main things are to put everything on with fusible or glue, whatever is your favorite. And as you see around the moon, when it dries, you're left with more color. But I am going to have to do some blending to make sure I don't just have like what looks like caterpillars. And this is also a good thing. I have ink tents in the blocks. So I might make more of a wash. Thread with my mouth. I might make more of a wash to go over it. Because that might look good too. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I just used Steamacine 2 Fusible. And um, and then whatever I didn't fuse down, then I glued down. But I love how the faces of the pumpkins stand out. So that's pretty cool. All right. So let me see. So is it a blender? Okay. It's hard to see over the internet. Okay. I, I know a better way to show you. Hold on just a second here. I know a much better way to show you. It's hard when you're working on dark fabric. Okay. Ink tents is, is a way to paint fabric. And you can bring out... You can bring out um, the colors and designs in your quilt. So now what I'm going to do, when you do it this way, it kind of just looks like colored pencil okay but watch while i do this i want you to watch what happens ink tense is a dye and but it's a very controlled precise dye that you can use to enhance your fabrics and in fact, some people use um, ink tints to paint the entire quilt top. There's all different kinds of paints, but I love ink tints because when I work with art quilting, art quilts, I want something that just I can give a little touch up to. Okay, I'm going to hurry up and do this so I can show you. Now, this is, I'm on paper, try to remember that, but I kind of want to, okay, now watch what happens when I put the medium. It would also work with water, but water will spread more, so that's why I like a medium. You can use a gel medium. Oh, I probably wasn't in the camera. Okay, you can use a gel medium, or you can use water. It could be, now... Since that's such a bright pink, let me wipe it off. Go back to the center. I want to get the center done. But do you see how it makes the medium or water 
makes the ink just bloom. See that? So this is what it does because that is a dye. That is an ink based dye that once it's heat set is permanent. And it's just a wonderful way to make your quilt come to life. And I could use the ink ink tense pencils are not cheap. So you don't want to waste them. Let me see. Where is this blue thread coming from? Goodness gracious. I've got some wild blue thread out here. Okay, so I just did a leaf. Now watch when I add the med gel medium. Oh, that brush still had a little pink on it. But anyway, so do you see how that color blossoms? And then when you heat set it, it is permanent. Okay, and let's say now that it's wet... I want to take a dark, I want those little creases in the petals to really stand out and the edge to stand out. When you go in with the pencil on a wet surface, the ink cut comes right off the end of the pencil. So you can always go back and add a little more. So anyway, so that is, I'm hoping this kind of shows you. You can use ink tents to highlight, to blend. For me, it was a way I couldn't find the right fabric to blend the orange pumpkin and the um, black base. So by going in with yellows and oranges, I could hope to kind of get a meat, you know, uh, a, a somewhere in between of that. See what I'm saying? Because if I color enough on this, it will help. You know, I darken this a little, and then I'm going to bring color to this, and hopefully then I'll have a little bit of medium. If it doesn't look right, then I'll go and grab some fabric. All righty. Well, while I've got you down here, I thought I would show you what I've made since we were last together. This is one of my Dorset buttons. And I wanted to experiment with making it with these little pearl beads. So here's the back. And this one I did a little differently. I had the smooth on the front. Normally, you have more of the spokes on the front. So I'm, lo I'm still loving making these. Then I wanted to make a ruched brooch for my daughter. And she said, well, I'll probably wear something if it looks like a poinsettia for Christmas. And so I actually did the beads to look like the little stamens from the poinsettia. So you were trying to make a picture with fabric, but you think the drawing and the painting is a little out of my league. Actually, it's not. Let me tell you why. Ink tints and fabrics. Do you have a coloring book? Put your coloring book under your fabric, outline it, then you color it in like you're doing a coloring book. There are so many different ways. On the internet, you can download all kinds of pictures of something you'd really like and then put your fabric over it. Then you can outline it and then you can color it in with you can use regular fabric paint or you can use ink tints. I just like ink tints because it goes on like a colored pencil. That automatically gives you a little bit more control. And the only reason I use the textile medium is so if you put just water on fabric, it'll wick out. But if you use medium, it helps it to stay where it is, even on this paper. If I had used water, it would have wicked out into the surrounding area, okay? So that's why I like using, but like I say, a lot of people don't buy the, the textile medium. You can get it in the little jars where you get your little acrylic paints. You can get gel mediums, textile, me, text, 
textile mediums, any in little bottles, just any craft store. But you could also go to Walmart and buy a bottle of aloe gel. It's just you want the wet that makes the dye bloom. You want an easy, controllable form. So that's the only thing for that one. And I just thought I'd show you as it's drying, it'll look better and better. It's just when it gets dark, it shows what's underneath a little. So now you know what I'm do going to do. It's just kind of a little simple trapunto way so that once, and I'll show it to you next week. I'll have it all done. And the pumpkins are going to stand out. And I love that kind of stuff. All right. So I know I've got my backing. This is going to be my backing for it. I think it looks kind of like a spooky Halloween sky. And here is my batting. Oh, all right. I think I started the show too quickly. And now I'll take a little breath. But anyway, I'm going to put a pen back on this. And I'm thinking about making some a, a couple little leaves behind it. And I think she'll enjoy this for Christmas. So I love creating. In fact, oh, that's what I was going to show you is I just got in a new pack of these rings because you know that I've been doing some of these Dorset buttons. I'm smitten with them. And these rings are from a woman on Etsy. If you want to know, write me an email and I'll give you her link. These are wonderful because they're not shiny and slippery like brass or white plastic um, curtain rods. They have a very matte finish. Can you see that matte finish? And it holds on to whatever fibers you wanted. It, they don't slip as much. I really like these. And I think the pack was 3 or $4 for 20 So, you know, pretty good deal. All right, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be going to retreat, and I love making little things to sell, I'm going to do dorset buttons in like a rainbow of colors, put them on a necklace. So I thought I need to get that size. All right, so let me see what y'all are talking about, and then let's talk about our first real back-to-art quilt project. Okay. Hello, Carol. Oh, I didn't even see who's here. Let's see. Um, ma, ma, ma. Oh, Charlene Piper. Hi, you were the first here. Jody's here. Lisa. Hi, Lisa, sweetie. And I got some pretty artwork to show you Sunday from Miss Lisa. So, good. Oh, it's 50 there and raining. Woo, chilly. It's raining here. We did get your rain. Wasn't it Jody that I asked to send the rain? And she did. Thank you so much. It is a lovely, bone-chilling, rainy day here. Not, I mean, you know, the nighttime temperature's been dipping into the 40s. And so, ooh, a little chilly. But, oh, it was windy here day before yesterday. Or was it yesterday? It was really windy. Ah, okay. That's wonderful. And Kathy Klein's at a retreat. Oh, that's wonderful. Hi, Cheryl Hogan. Good to see you. Look at all these people here. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. Alberta Powell's here. Okay. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways nowadays. And with quilting, anything goes, which is so it makes it so much fun to do art quilting because you can do beading. You can do thread painting. You can do fabric paint, you know, actual paint painting. You can even do something called encaustic, which I'm going to try it one day. It's a way to thicken paint with wax or different things to give it an actual three-dimensional look to it. Everything goes in quilting nowadays, and I'm really tickled. So before we go, you might see this. This is the first time I've ever done this. What this monstrosity is, it is, remember I told you I have a new great nephew. Great grand nephew. I forget how to say it. He's my nephew's child. 
So, I guess just a great nephew. So, here is the nephew's quilt. Okay? And, yeah, I've got it the right way up. So there are a couple little things I wanted to show you. I ran out of this yellow border to do the top and bottom. So what I did is I pieced it with some of the blue border. And that way, nobody will know. It looks like a design change or a design element. So here is the quilt. Is The top is all done. I need to get it on my frame because... The baby was born a few weeks ago. I've got to get busy. So what I did for the first time, I've never done this before, never done a pieced back. I've always used, well, when I say pieced back, if I had 45-inch fabric, I would put two pieces together, blah, blah, blah. But I'm talking about making, specifically cutting uh, blocks and all that. So what I did is I decided to use up every scrap that I had left over from the quilt and even some parts of the little border, some of the, the pieced triangles, some strips that I had left over. I decided to use it all up. So when that's going to go on the back of the baby's quilt and that way... I don't have all these scraps left over that I've got to store and figure out what to do with. And especially if the baby colors and stuff, I, I don't really, wouldn't use those scraps up. So this is my way of saying, waste not, want not. I mean, I made the entire, the only, the only new stuff or whole cut that I had to put was a three and a half inch border down each long side. The rest of it was stuff I had already cut out to make the quilt. So I kind of like it. I feel like it's a little bit of recycling. <laughs> and, you know, with babies, this is probably going to be put on the floor and he'll be laid on top of it. So I think that's perfect. I just thought I would show you how good this flower that's the beauty of ink tents, and it will do the same thing on fabric if you handle it right. Normally, if I paint on fabric, I like to outline edge with a simple thread, which kind of keeps it the color corralled, helps keep it corralled in there. But I just thought I would show you, you saw that color bloom. That's a lot of intense color, hence it's called ink tents. All right. Oh, and just... I want to go back really quickly, and where are the cute little, oh, here it is. This is done with ruching, and I did that on one of the shows, most likely a Sunday show, but it's where you take a, um, a strip of fabric, maybe I'll show you. Here is the fabric it came from. So it was this wide, so that is... Inch and three quarters, I could do inch and a half would be plenty. Then you just fold it in like this. And then it's just a matter of hand stitching in a zigzag from stitch up, over the edge, down, and just zigzag it up, up. And I marked them out on this one so I'd have a nice uniform um, flower, but then you take a, a nice strong thread or a double thread and you just do basting, basting, that's important, basting that zigzag, and that way when you draw it up, this is what you get, and isn't that pretty, and you can put whatever kind of beads you want, then I'll put a pin back, and, but this is ruching, and it's just a, ruching means gathering of fabric all right so anyway i've got that i've got the ruching let's talk about our first real pro this halloween was just fun just to kind of a warm-up exercise you like that also i want you to feel free to do things in smaller sizes because Doing the size of this Halloween, 
I like using the smaller size. So much easier to get it done. Simple, straightforward. So, use what, make whatever size you want. What we're going to do is I love, look, I love trying to figure out how people make really unique backgrounds for their art quilts because I find it fascinating. So what I'm going to do right now is show you some slides that I've got. Lots of slides to give you ideas on how to make a unique background for your art quilt. Because I have been, I've, I've watched people do this and thought it was fascinating. Okay, so let me come to the folder with, here was all, all of the Halloween ideas that I had in this. Because I love the internet. You can find so much. So I love it, love it. So those were the Halloween ideas I had. I showed you last week. And you can go back to last week's Thursday night and you will find it. So now what we want to do is I want to find the ideas for art quilt. Okay. I'm going to put this on a slideshow so that it will show them big and you can enjoy. All right, let's see. Look, here we go. All right, look at these backgrounds. This is like a mosaic brick. This one is a bunch of oddly cut up fabrics. Look at this, look at those blocks. Now, this is a drawing, but I just thought, how dynamic does that make it? These are uneven strips. Here are rectangles. Here are squares. Here are fine little strips. And this, you can really see the strips. Look at that. Tiny little blocks. Tiny little mosaic type blocks. These are nice square blocks. And even through here, like a watercolor quilting. And this, how in the world did she do that? That is fascinating. This is a diamond. A horizontal diamond pattern. More strips. And not even trying to make them blend. Look at this. Doesn't this set off the, the applique leaves well? Then look at the birds. These are all squares. Different color squares. And then look at these strips going in circles. How exciting is that? Simple, larger strips. Look at this. Look at the Bargello block background. How cool is that? Look at this undersea background. So it's just, I've been very fascinated when I see pieced backgrounds. Look at this. The wave is made from storm at sea blocks. Look at these interesting blocks. How was that made? Wonderful. Abrupt strips. Look at this tile effect. This reminded me of Jody's night sky. Look at these vertical strips. And they even interrupt the tree. And then tiny, tiny triangles. Woo! Another mosaic type at an angle. Look at the strips of the background. It gives such motion and movement. This is a square and a square type box square. And here are more curvy strips. Look at the tile effect. And square leaves. But I love it. Look at this. All these little pieces. And look how wonderful the light is. Look at strips going in all different directions. 
Now look at those blocks. Isn't that something? Then look at the curvy strips below. Look at this owl. Does that look like a cold, fierce winter wind? So I'm just fascinated with people using different kinds of backgrounds. Even this has all random sized blocks. Look at all of these narrow strips and pieces. And back to the beginning. So, that's what I thought we could do with our first quilt. Coming back, whoops, I, okay. That's what I thought we could look into. How are people doing this? And what is the effect that they're trying to create? In some of them, it gave a stark effect. In some of them, it, it kind of blended background with foreground in a uniform kind of square so that the land just flowed. But that is fascinating. And I wanted to have, I wanted to have a drawing made up, but honestly, I love all of those things that, not one thing stood out that said, I want to make that. I'm still thinking. And, you know, I wish that great creative ideas would just come right anytime I summon them. But that's kind of not how creativity always works. And so I've got to spend some quiet time thinking. I have a folder of quilt ideas of things I've always thought of doing with a quilt. And I'm going to have to come up with something that I can use an unusual background like that to create a, a, an even better quilt. Because I think those backgrounds really made those quilts, really added the interest and the personality to those quilts. So, uh-oh, you had to go to the ER last week. Oh, boy. Vertigo is not fun. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So, anyway, that's what we're thinking about is how can we do this? Um, you know, some are, some people have said they take blocks that were given to them or, or blocks, orphan blocks, and they will cut them up and sew them back in random, unusual patterns. Some are slices of strips of fabric sewn together. Some, I love the curved ones where you, you, I know how to do that. You lay several fabrics on top of each other and you take your rotary cutter and you cut through all layers in a curve and then that way you can kind of move them around and have this color and that and they'll kind of fit together um some of these are actually known blocks like storm at sea um monkey wrench there some are actual blocks that they make in the background colors or the sky colors to use in their art quilt. Some look like mosaic tiles. Those really do catch my eye. Some are cut like that one tree that was like blowing all of the background sky. Everything was cut to follow that arc. So when she was drawing, she drew the arc of the tree and then made the, the, the sky and the clouds and the wind mimic that and there was such a sense of movement drama wow um then i like i like some i even like the ones that you know normally i try to blend everything make it look as realistic as possible i like the ones where they had like all of these different ground covers in random length pieces put in strips so that they start the color started and stopped all along the thing it was it was traumatic i don't know which way to go they can highlight a single subject 
but they don't detract. They add to the quilt, but not take over the quilt. So I thought that was really, really interesting. They can add whimsy. I mean, that big, huge wave that had storm at sea blocks. How fun. That is so humorous. I love that kind of stuff. So some, some of the artists were playing with lights and darks and color, um, temperature, families, uh, just... It, it was fascinating. So what I'm going to want us to do, each of us to do, is come up with our own drawing of what we would like to create. It can be like that one stark dead tree. It could be a sailboat on water that's made with all kinds of random strips. It could be... Setting sun, done with all of these random strips. I just want you to stretch. Stretch your artistic, your creative muscles. And try something out of the box. Because I've not worked, I've never done something like this. And I think it would be really fascinating. So you need to decide what size you want it. If I can draw up a few patterns, I will offer them to you if you want to use them. Um, feel free to look on the internet, get ideas, and you can use that to draw up things. We try not to copy so you can see whether they're copyright free or use them as inspiration and make your own. Even the Halloween thing. I looked up all the inspiration and I pulled things out of different ones. So it's uniquely mine. Um, let's see. But it could be a holiday quilt. It could be a childhood memory. It could be your favorite animal. It could be a famous landmark. Pick what you want to do and then design design a unique background. This time, I'm challenging you to make a background that adds something, whether it's humor, movement, light, dark, add something to that background and then put whatever you want. I, I, I'm, you know, this is going to be tricky. So go to the internet, type in Look around. Try to flood yourself with ideas of things that are out there. And then start putting together. Just do a little sketch. Get a little notebook or piece of paper. Do your little sketch. And then, um, then work from there. Okay? And I will show you once again how to use the 16, I call the 16 block method to actually draw something from something you see. And um, I'll show you that again next week. And that way you can enlarge, you can make it smaller. You can, if you think I don't know how to draw, you will be able to with the 16 block method. Very simple. So if you find a picture you like, an inspiration you like, print it out on a piece of paper and I'll show you what to do from there. All right, I think I also want to finish up some of the wonderful art quilts we've done over the last couple years because they have been fantastic. So I'm hoping you'll pull out some of yours and from time to time, just 10 or 15 minutes before you know it, they will be done. So, all right, I think that's it. Any questions you have for me? And if I get a good drawing, I'll put it on our um, quilts, our time to quilt groups IO site. So to give you a little inspiration. Oops, I was way down. Let me see. All right. The ink tents remind you of magic markers. Yeah, I just, I love the way they bloom though. And that allows you to use less or more and 
if I had not put if I had not put as much medium on there, I flooded it with medium. But if you still want, you know, you want it to be more subtle, then kind of, you know, dip your brush in the medium, then wipe it off, then go in very slowly. And that way you can leave some of the pencil marks if you want, light, dark, whatever. But I wanted it to show up on the camera. So I put a lot of medium on my brush. But that's what I recommend. If you get the ink tints, play with them. Play, play, play with them. And they're really quite special. All right. Let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Boy, I got a mess over here, don't I? But I've gotten the baby quilt done. I've got all nine blocks. Oh, let me see if I can show you. Let me real quickly bring it around and show you because I finished the ninth block for our block of the week. And this coming up week, I'll have our 10th block of the week. So, and as Mary found out, if you write me and ask for it early, I'll send it to you early. But I think this thing is really coming along. And hopefully by Sunday, I'm going to have some of the sashing, that star sashing. And uh, that way you can see that. So I think this is about it next Thursday. <laughs> oh, this past Saturday, I got or Friday, I got my booster. And my lymph nodes are a little touch sore. But I didn't have any other problems. My arm wasn't even really sore. So, I've made out really good. So, I'm really tickled. Mark and I feel so relieved. We'll be able to be around our children who have been vaccinated and not have to wear masks. So, we're very excited. But next Thursday night, our next Art Quilt Thursday, I forgot that I'm going to have dental, dental work done on this side top. She has a couple fillings she has to replace because they've cracked. And there's a crack in the tooth she's going to try to hold together with a big filling. So we'll see how I do. But in case you get a, a message that says, there will be no art quilt Thursday, you'll know that my cheek, I still look like a chipmunk. So we'll see how it goes. I plan on being here, but just in case. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you Sunday at 3 p.m. New York time. Tomorrow, my daughter is turning 43. And so I'm going with her into Asheville, North Carolina, which I can't wait. That is the Austin, Texas of North Carolina. And it's very bohemian, and I can't wait to drive around, take her out to lunch. But we're having a mother-daughter day for her birthday. So I'm excited. I'll see if I can take plenty of pictures to show you. All right, you have a great, in fact, I'll see you Sunday on Thanksgiving Day. Ooh, we should do something spooky. <laughs> so take good care, and I will see you all Sunday sometime around 3.05 p.m. New York time or Eastern time. Keep up the great work. Keep sending me pictures. You've already be, been sending me pictures, and I'm saving them. So we'll have a great show in town next week. If any of you happen to do a Halloween quilt, send me pictures, and I'll show that next Thursday. All right, take care. Have a great, great weekend coming up. Do something just for you. Bye-bye, everybody. See you soon.